Welcome back. I hope the conversation that you just had about how uh, you've loved people this last week, especially as it relates to their success, has been an interesting one to you. You know, one of the best ways to learn how to love other people with Jesus' love is to hear how other people you know have done it and to think about what have you have experienced in the last week. And now we're going to move to another area of Christ's love, forgiveness. Forgiveness stands right in the middle of everything that Jesus came to do. Jesus said something very early in his ministry that deals just exactly with forgiveness as an everyday kind of thing. This is from the Sermon on the Mount, the fifth chapter of Matthew. Uh, and uh, let's take a look here starting at verse 23. Therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift, leave it there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother or your sister. Then come and offer your gift. Did you hear that? That's, that's directed to us, to all of us. God is a God of love, and if we're going to serve Him, we have to seek to live at peace with all of the people who are around us. Now, some of them may not choose to live at peace with us, but we are to seek to li live at peace with them. Now, sometimes when we sit down to meditate, you know, and we're relaxing and we're doing all this good stuff, we find that that part of our mind that meditates is already occupied. It is literally preoccupied with something else. Maybe it's a worry. Worry grabs the meditational center and, and just dominates it, just monopolizes it. Another kind of thing that will do that is knowing that somebody has something against us, just what Jesus described here. And we know we should do something and we aren't sure what. Now, Jesus says something very profound in the middle of this. What he says is, if your sister or your brother has something against you, from the very beginning of relationship issues, one of the ways in which people try to handle it is to say it's the other person's fault. I'm really not involved. This wasn't my deal. I didn't start it. I'm not responsible for it. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, it may be literally true that if the other person's decided to be hard-hearted towards you, there really is nothing you can do about it. That's their freedom. But our responsibility as a Christian person is to seek to be reconciled. To seek to be reconciled and then come and give our gift to God. God wants to be invited into those difficult relationships in our life. And if we will do that, you just might be surprised at the wisdom that God shows you. I knew a fellow named Sam. He was a part of a club in a small town. And, well, there was a bully in the club who just liked to run everything. He was always on the board. He was kind of puffed up and Sam tangled with him. Now this guy was so dedicated to having his own way that when somebody challenged him, he would do some unkind things. Let's put it that way. He tried to run Sam right out of the club. Well, the people who had been there for a while knew this guy, knew how he was, knew that he had settled down in time, and they just kind of withdrew from him. They just kind of isolated him until he did relent and then life continued. But it left Sam with a problem. He'd had his feelings hurt. He'd been upset. He was still angry. It really wasn't his fault. This was the way this guy was and he had been this way long before Sam ever moved into town. But Sam had a problem. He came to me because when he tried to meditate, 
All he could think about was this guy that had given him a hard time. All he could think about is, what do I do now? What do I do with my frustration? What do I do with the embarrassment that he's caused me? And so I reminded him of this passage. We cannot go to the altar and worship God if we know somebody has something against us and we're all stirred up. We have to decide what we are going to do first. And then God will release us so we can live the rest of our life. This is actually God's intention. This is not accidental. It's nothing wrong with your prayer life. Nothing wrong with how you meditate. There's nothing wrong with your brain. It's just the way it is. God wants us to do what we can to keep our main and to keep our relationships healthy and to maintain them and not throw them away, even when they're difficult. And so Sam invited God in. He asked him, Lord, show me what it is that I need to know in order to be your person in this situation. After having prayed over this for five or ten minutes every day for about a week and a half, Sam called me up and said, Jamie, you'll never guess what I've come to realize. God has shown me that I could, I can be mean to people, and I have been. And what disturbs me almost as much as what, what has happened to me is what I've done to other people. And yet, God has always treated me as somebody who could make a better decision today. God does not dwell in the past. God does not hold the past against us. He always holds out an opportunity. If he didn't do that, I wouldn't be where I am today. I'm grateful when God does that. It's just I don't want to do that with this guy. I'm still upset with him. So I asked him, what do you think you need to do? He says, well, I need to forgive him from my heart. I need to turn this over to God because it's, it's really too hard for me to do on my own. If I could, I'd have done it already. And so we prayed together and he, he released this to his God, to his Father in heaven, to the same God that is the God of this, of this bully. He decided that the thing to do was to treat him the same way God had treated Sam which is as a person who could, today, make a new and better decision. Not to dwell in the past, but to live in the present. That's where God wants us. That's where we minister. That's where we're effective. That's where forgiveness gets us. It frees us from the past and puts us in the present so we can be God's person. A couple days later, I saw Sam and he said, You know, almost as soon as I realized that this is what I had to do, God freed me, and I was able to meditate again. Then I asked him how he was doing with the bully. He said, well, I don't know. But the other day I saw him do something that was really kind of neat with another person. So I mentioned to him that I'd seen that and thought it was, and admired him for it, that I thought it was the right thing. I don't know. I don't know if he'll ever change, but I've changed, and I thank God for that. When you sit down to meditate, the same thing may happen to you sometimes. That something or someone else is already there, and you just can't focus on God because you keep on coming back, you keep on coming back, you keep on coming back. Don't fight it. Invite God in. Ask God to show you what wisdom is what Christ would do. Sam remembered a passage from the Bible. It was a tremendous help to him. It was about Simon the Pharisee who had treated Jesus poorly. But Jesus forgave him and offered him an opportunity to establish a relationship, even in spite of his insults. That's what we do. We don't pretend it doesn't count. We don't ignore it. We acknowledge it. But we also remembered that the person that we're talking to is loved by God, the same God that loves us, and is perfectly capable today of making a better decision. And now, 
we're going to meditate on another passage. This also is about forgiveness, and it's just huge. So sit back, relax, put your feet on the floor, close your eyes, and starting at the top of your head, just release any unnecessary tension that is in your body. Romans chapter 5 verses 6 through 8 You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Lord, what sticks out in this passage for me? If nothing is coming or your mind is wandering, pray. Lord, what would you have me consider? Lord, what is your word to me? Jot down your thoughts briefly. The Sixth Cycle of Exercises Forgiveness 1 Kings Give me a God-listening heart. Exercise 1 Listening for the Truth For the next week we will focus on the role of forgiveness in love. Relax and allow your heart to be calm. Lord, am I forgiven? Lord, do you forgive me? Lord, am I acceptable to you? What came to your mind? Is it consistent with the statement, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him? Exercise 2. Listening for the gifts we receive. Relax and take a deep breath. Pray to yourself. Where was I when I experienced your forgiveness recently? Lord, when did I feel your forgiveness yesterday? Lord, show me how you forgave me. Make your notes and thank God for forgiveness. Exercise 3. Listening for the gifts we give. Take a deep breath and let it out. Lord, show me where I have assured another that they are forgiven. Lord, what was happening when I forgave another? Lord, whom did I forgive yesterday? Thank God for the privilege of forgiving others as you have been forgiven. Exercise 4. Listening for God's guidance for a ministry to others. Pray through your prayer list. Prepare for the day's ministry of forgiving love. Relax and take a deep breath. Lord, who would you have me forgive today? Lord, whom do I know who needs to be assured that they are acceptable as a person?
Lord, who needs to know that it is okay to make mistakes? When done, write down the people and acts that God brought to your heart today. Make notes on whatever it was that came to you while you were hearing that passage read to you. And use it each day for a week. This is a passage that you, every Christian should know by heart. And I think you'll be surprised at the new and different things you see every time you read it. And now, let's meditate on forgiveness. The sixth cycle of exercises. Forgiveness. First Kings. Give me a God listening heart. Exercise 1. Listening for the truth. For the next week, we will focus on the role of forgiveness in love. Relax and allow your heart to be calm. Lord, am I forgiven? Lord, do you forgive me? Lord, am I acceptable to you? What came to your mind? Is it consistent with the statement, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him? Exercise 2. Listening for the gifts we receive. Relax and take a deep breath. Pray to yourself. Where was I when I experienced your forgiveness recently? Lord, when did I feel your forgiveness yesterday? Lord, show me how you forgave me. Make your notes and thank God for forgiveness. Exercise 3. Listening for the gifts we give. Take a deep breath and let it out. Lord, show me where I have assured another that they are forgiven. Lord, what was happening when I forgave another? Lord, whom did I forgive yesterday? Thank God for the privilege of forgiving others as you have been forgiven. Exercise 4. Listening for God's guidance for a ministry to others. Pray through your prayer list. Prepare for the day's ministry of forgiving love. Relax and take a deep breath. Lord, who would you have me forgive today? Lord, whom do I know who needs to be assured that they are acceptable as a person? Lord, who needs to know that it is okay to make mistakes? When done, write down the people and acts that God brought to your heart today.
I hope the conversation you're about to have is one that is filled with the presence of God. For the Holy Spirit would lead you through these difficult times in your life, whether it's somebody has something against you or you have something against somebody else. And God would make you a good and trustworthy friend to those people you know who go through similar times in their lives. God so very much appreciates everything you do when you love another with Jesus' love. God bless you.